Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about another important topic called coronary ear embolism. It's very rare, but it can happen to anybody and almost always it's an iatrogenic, but you need to know about this potential complication, how to appreciate it, how to recognize this, and the next step which is how to manage these patients. Uh, the only way you can manage these patients is that you are aware of this potential complication and you can recognize it immediately. So if you look at the cine loop on the left, uh, you see a coronary angiogram of the left system. Um, along with that, you also see an ICD on the top right corner. In the left lower quadrant, you see an ICD lead. So by just looking at the cine loop gives you information that probably patient is having a coronary angiogram and might have heart failure um, or low ejection fraction. That's why he might he or she might have an ICD. So with that, I want you to move on to picture A in the middle here. And you see the catheter in the blue, and then you see the left main, and the LED in the red, and then you have this left circumflex, which I am putting arrows. And you can, and once we go over this uh, diagram, we'll go back to the cine loop, and we will try to appreciate uh, the potential complication that we are going to be talking about. So in the middle of the screen on the picture A, you see I'm just circling this, you see two air bubbles, one in the left circumflex, one in the LAD, and that is the important, and this is something that we will be talking about today. On the top right corner, as I said, you see an ICD. In the left lower quadrant, you see an ICD lead. If you're not familiar with that, the easiest way to recognize an ICD, ICD lead is that you will see this coil, the black thick coil on the lead. And if it is a pacemaker, you might not see this thick coil. So uh, even if the ICD was not in the picture, if you see a lead with the, with the coil and then the tip, that's probably an ICD. And if you see just see a wire that goes and it is inserting into the, the right ventricle, it's probably in a pacemaker. So we will cover that separately, just coming back to the to the potential complication that we are talking about is coronary air embolism. Almost always, as we talked about, it's an iatrogenic, and you can have this in between the exchange of catheters if the catheters are not properly flushed. And the next time you inject uh, in the dye, you might move the air into the coronary system. If there are potential uh, malfunction or loose connections uh, on the manifold if you use if you are using a manual manifold if there are any loose connections uh, you might suck the air initially and then uh, the next time when you inject the dye you might move the air into the coronary circulation if your lab is using one of those manifolds which are like a manual with a manual plunger and a syringe the next time when you go and look at the manifold you will see that on the lower portion of the of the syringe there is a dead space about a two to three cc's of a dead space so that the plunger does not move all the way down to the bottom and this is for the reason this two to three cc of a dead space is potentially to trap any air that you might have sucked into the manifold so that is very important the next time um, when you see that you can appreciate but at, at the same time be very mindful that you have to keep the manifold at around like 45 degree so what happens is that um, the air goes onto the top and the die goes down with the gravity and then when when you inject you're not injecting the air so this can happen if you are uh, keeping the manifold parallel to the patient's body and then the air can potentially be pushed into the coronary circulation if that happens, as I, again, as I said, it's very important that you appreciate that and that so that you can take the proper next management steps. So with that, I want you to move on to picture B here. Here you see the same is as uh, is a is an image, a static image from the cine loop from the left. I have highlighted and I have magnified this portion of the left main. So you see that owl eye appearance, two air bubbles one going into the LAD and another one going into the left circumflex. We move on to the picture C here. Now those air embolism have moved and they are in the middle of the left circumflex here. 
and one into the middle of the LED. And if you go back onto the cine loop on the left, I just want you to pay attention to the left circumflex and just and you will start to see that the air embolism traveling through the left circumflex and going to the distal circulation. And then you can individually pay attention to the LED. Same thing you will see that the air embolism coming from the left main into the LED and then moving into the distal circulation. When you are done, you can always appreciate that. You can see it more clearly by uh, by lowering the frame rate or, or or playing the cine in the in the slow motion uh, to kind of look at these clearly. But what I'm really stressing is when you are doing this coronary angiogram, you have to recognize it very quickly. And if you have not seen this complication, you might not be able to appreciate that. It is always easy to go back in the hindsight and, and you know, look at these angiograms or, or s slow the speed of the frames or, or, the, or the video and then you can appreciate it more clearly. So once this complication happens, uh, then most important thing is how you treat that or how you manage these patients. So immediately after, if, if this a, a fair amount of air has been injected into the coronary circulation, the patient might start to have chest pain. Or you might start to see ST elevation. So these are some of the signs, early signs of a potential um, complication as well. Uh, an excessive amount of air or sufficient amount of air is, has been injected into the coronary circulation. What you can do in these patients is the first and most important thing is you, you ask the nurses or your tech or, or somebody who's helping with you, you with a coronary angiogram to pay, put the patient on high flow oxygen. So you can put the patient 100% non rebreather or high flow oxygen. What happens with that is that causes increased oxygen saturation in the blood as well as in the tissues. So as the oxygen saturation in the tissues goes up as you are giving 100% oxygen to the patient, then the nitrogen level in the tissue goes down. And we know the air that has been injected into the coronary circulation is atmospheric air, which is high in nitrogen. So the nitrogen from the air bubble moves into the less concentration of nitrogen, which is in the tissues. So from the, what basically what you are doing is you basically shrinking the bubble and letting it dissolve quickly. Another thing you can do and yet that you should be doing is to inject more, more contrast into the coronary circulation or you can also inject uh, heparin solution, two or three flushes rapidly to kind of manually push the clots, no, sorry, manually push the air embolism into the distal circulation. In most of the cases, you will see that the, the air bubble will move into the distal bed. It might cause some uh, stasis or, or decrease coronary flow, uh, but it might not give a massive heart attack. But if it is a, it's a sufficient amount of air has been injected into the coronary circulation, it might potentially block the, the blood flow in the epicardial vessel. If that happens, um, sometimes you might have to use a guide catheter and an over-the-wire balloon and manually suck these air bubbles. You can also use the wires, coronary wires that we use to kind of burst these bubbles in the coronary circulation. You should also put the patient on anticoagulation as we know that the air in the coronary circulation is, is pro-coagulant and it can lead to, to thrombosis. So if the, the air bubbles have moved into the distal circulation um, and that you have put the patient on high flow oxygen, you're flushing it with uh, heparinized saline or with a contrast, you, you monitor the patient very closely and for the most part, the patient do fine. But again, as I stressed in the beginning, the most important message of this talk is to recognize this potential complication and know how why 
and how it is happening, trying to be meticulous during flushing of the catheters, keeping your manifold at 45 degrees so that you don't push the air into, into the coronary circulation. And for some reason, after you take all these precautions, we take all the time, even after that, if, if this complication happens, you are prepared and you are ready to manage these patients quickly. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.